All right, so that's kind of the setup that I use for, for all my wacky worm fishing. It doesn't matter if I'm around here in East Tennessee or if I'm down in Texas, that's my go-to setup. That bed gets to go. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Technique of the Month video. And we are into the month of April and April is just a fantastic month in my opinion. I mean, to start off with, we get to celebrate Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the month of April. So that's a fantastic thing. Um, you know, as, as a believer, that's where our hope definitely lies. But we're, we're so glad every year when April comes around to get to celebrate Easter. Another part about April that is great is that it's turkey season turkey season this month so that's another good thing but another fun thing i mean hey if you're a fisherman obviously i am april is the month that where i live i'm thinking spawning bass so you've got you've got a lot of great reasons to wake up in april um you know a perfect april day to me you enjoy easter and then you wake up early you go turkey hunting you kill a turkey about 10 o'clock you go out on the lake and go fishing i mean that is just that's a jam up day in my opinion so one of my very favorite ways, now that we're getting into the technique of the month finally, after all that, technique of the month that I want to cover for the month of April is wacky worm fishing. Um, it, this, is, this is a great way to catch bass that are spawning. You know, that's, that's definitely something I'm thinking about all throughout this month. There's a lot of fish that are getting ready to spawn. You, at some point in time, you'll actually find them on the bed. You can sight fish them. And then there's, you know, some fish that are starting to get done with spawning. But all throughout the month of April, I'm always going to have a wacky worm rigged up laying on the front deck of the boat and, uh, and ready to go. Just because those fish are up shallow, you know, it's a great way to be able to catch them. So first off, I think I'm going to go through my rod and reel setup um, for wacky rig fishing. And then we'll get into really breaking down, you know, everything about how I fish this, how I fish this. So setup is, is really simple in my opinion. For me, it's going to be a Johnny Morse platinum rod and reel but I like the 7-1 medium action rod as my go-to for this. If you've ever watched my, my pick two as far as spinning rod setups, you know I keep my spinning rod setups pretty simple for the most part. But um, yeah, that wacky rig, that 7-1 medium action is the perfect rod for that for me. It's long enough I can make a good accurate skip. Got plenty of backbone. It just does everything really, really well. Uh, I like that size 30 and the Johnny Morse Platinum spinning reel. And then I always spool it up exactly the same for all my wacky worm fishing. And that is 10 pound Bass Pro Hyper Braid. I'll, I always use the yellow just because I can see it really well. And then I, I will vary my leader uh, size a little bit depending on water clarity and the type of cover that I'm fishing. The lightest I ever go is eight pound test. The heaviest I'll ever go on this setup is 12. And you know, kind of the, difference in where I'm going to use that. Take a, you know, a, a lake that's really clear, very little cover. That's where I'm going to go with that eight pound test. You know, if I'm fishing clear water, I think of like Norse Lake around here, or, you know, some of the Ozark lakes, but I'm not fishing around much, much cover. I'll drop down to eight. If I'm at Lake Fork in Texas, fishing in grass and, you know, a lot of heavy cover and really big fish, I'll go up to 12. That's where I keep it in that eight to 12 range though. Obviously 10 is the great middle of the road there. Um, they never really had much trouble out of that 10 pound test. And then the hook that I use for, for wacky rig fishing, um, I keep that really simple as well. It's a VMC weedless Nico hook. I use either a, a size two or a size one, not, not alt, but a size two or a size one, uh, the two being a little bit smaller of those. That's the two hooks that I use. And really depending a little bit on which bait that I'm using in particular, this is a Bass Pro Finesse Finec Worm. Um, I'll use that on a number two most of the time, but if I'm, uh, if I'm in heavier grass, heavier cover, using that little bit heavier size leader, I'm going to go up with that number one. It's just a little bit beefier hook, and I don't have to worry about it opening up. The number two is excellent if you're in more open water, you know, very sparse cover, or the fish that you're targeting just aren't quite as big. But if i am got a chance of catching, you know, a lot of five pound plus fish, I want to step up to the size wire that that number one is and never have to worry about it. I can put a lot of heat on that hook and don't have to worry about it opening up. All right, so that's kind of the setup that I use for, for all my wacky worm fishing. It doesn't matter if I'm around here in East Tennessee or if I'm down in Texas, that's my go-to setup. 
But something that I that I will vary from time to time, you know, is, is definitely the bait. And the the big thing that I look at there and why I'm gonna choose one bait over another has really got a lot to do with the depth that I'm fishing, plus, you know, kind of the attitude of the fish. If those fish are I don't wanna call it lethargic, but they're just, you know, they're wanting a bait that hangs in front of their face more, something that obviously I'm not gonna make a, a I'm not gonna have a, a wacky worm that suspends, but something that just kind of hangs in front of their face more, that's what I'm gonna go with that finesse finec worm. Um, it's a little bit smaller diameter worm. You know, it doesn't have as much salt. It doesn't sink as fast as say, either a sticko worm, you know, just the standard Bass Pro sticko worm, or that wacky sticko. Both of those are, are fatter baits that have more salt in them. They weigh more. They're gonna sink faster with just a hook. This is all weightless. I never, the kind of wacky rig fishing I'm talking about is all weightless here. Um, you know, so that, that wacky sticko is gonna fall quite a bit faster than that finesse finec worm. Just on the same hook, everything the same. It's gonna fall about twice as fast to be quite honest, but there's times especially really, really shallow water. You know, I catch a lot of fish on a wacky worm and sub two feet of water. And if I'm doing that, it's probably gonna be with that finesse finec worm. I've got a lot of confidence going behind other anglers with that setup that may be wacky rig fishing. And that slower fall gets me a lot of bites behind those guys at times. But again, that's really got a lot to do with the depth, but also just the attitude of those fish. There seems to be a time when you start getting later into the spawn that those fish, whether, whether it's a pressure thing or it's just, you know, maybe that more of them have some fry that you can't quite see yet, but those fish tend to relate more to the surface and stuff towards the surface is where you're more likely to get a bite out of those fish. That's when that really, you know, seems to shine. But between those two, whether it's fishing pressure or just, uh, you know, just those fish having some fry starting to come out, that can be, a, can be a big deal that you gotta keep in mind. Um, for colors, we'll, cut, we'll hit that real quick. I keep a lot of natural colors. That's what I use most of the time. Um, but there are definitely situations where it calls for you know, something gaudy. And that's where like that pink finesse finec worm really comes into play. I mentioned that in that, in that pig vor video about the experience down there on Lake Fork. Um, I, I can remember a club tournament way back in the days of the first time that I ever fished a pink floating worm and just how effective that it can be. So it's one of those deals that sometimes you use it just to kind of find fish because maybe they'll follow it and they'll track it and they'll swirl on it, but they really don't try to eat it because they just don't know what it is. You know, they'll just be aggressive towards it in that way, trying to run it off of their bed. And then you can take something like a more natural approach and actually be able to catch them. Um, but, uh, but for wacky rig fishing, let's go through a typical cast. As, as for you know how I'm gonna fish this bait. A lot of it's visual. I'm, I'm either fishing cover that I can see, you know, it may be skipping it around buck bushes, little clumps of grass. Probably my favorite thing to do though with a wacky worm, you know, I'm fishing whatever covers there, but I really like it when I've got just enough visibility in the water where I'm just casting at kind of light spots or dark spots, something different that's out there. So this is a very visual thing. This is where having a good pair of polarized sunglasses comes in. And I mean, that's gonna be a pair of Costas for me. One of two lenses, I'll hit this real quick and then we'll get into that cast. Either low light conditions, it's gonna be the sunrise silver mirror lens. Under normal bright sky conditions, I'm gonna wear the gray lens with the silver mirror. Um, but I, I can't stress that enough. You'll catch so many fish, so many more fish, just because you've got on a good pair of polarized sunglasses and able to see the next six inches or a foot deeper into the water than what you would see without them. And you'll catch a ton of ton more fish because of that simply and, uh, and putting your bait in the right place. But So let's say you're back in this cove, you're moving around, you're seeing these light spots, you're seeing these dark spots. You've got your wacky rig tied on, on your Bass Pro Platinum Rod. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take and say we're fishing a wacky sticko, something that's gonna get down there, you know, fairly quick, not something I've gotta wait a long time on for it to get to the bottom and, you know, two feet of water. You've got 24, 28 inches of water here. I'm gonna make a cast to where I try to get that just to the other side of whatever my target is. I don't want it to land. If you've got a, if you've got a spot the size of a five gallon bucket, you can see over there, I don't want it to land in the middle, okay? I'm here, white spot here, 
here's the outside edge of it. I want it to land on the outside edge of that five gallon bucket that I can see over there. And that way I get to fish it completely through, you know, that, that potential bed of what I'm seeing. I, like I said, I don't want it to land in the middle. I don't want it to spook the fish because of that, but I also want to be able to cover all that ground because just think of it this way. If this is this fish's bed, this is where its garden is within this five gallon bucket. You land in the middle of it and fish it out. You only covered half of it. You may have hit the sweet spot, but you weren't there very long. You may not have hit it whatsoever. So if you're able to drag it corner or edge to edge of that diameter of that five foot bucket, you're much more likely to aggravate that fish in the biting. So I see that target. I'm going to throw over there and I'm going to dead stick it completely slack line. This is where that yellow hyper braid comes in. I want to do nothing but let that line lay on the water, but I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch that line until it quits sinking. I'm going to let it lay there for another few seconds. Once I know that bait's on the bottom, then it's kind of a light jiggle with a rod tip. Taking up the slack, and I never want to get it actually tight. Okay, this is something that I've learned just from years fishing, but something you can see if you're ever in really clear water or you know, get a chance to throw a bait in the pool. If you actually pull your line tight, you've already moved your bait. Whether you, whether you realized it or not, you've already moved it probably more than you ever would consider that you've actually moved it. So I would just want to kind of take up the slack, never get the line tight, and then just start jiggling while slowly raising the rod tip, okay? And that way I'm, I'm barely moving that bait along, but I'm giving that bait some action. I'm kind of making the tails of that worm, you know, kind of wave back and forth with that slow, Easy jiggle. Now this isn't a fast, this isn't real rapid trying to twitch the bait. This is just a, just a slow, easy bounce of the rod tip while slowly taking up some slack or slowly raising the rod tip. Again, keep in mind, you're not trying to move this bait a great distance. This for me is a very target oriented presentation. Um, you know, I, I, the extreme opposite end of this, but in a bottom dragging technique, let's, let's say a football jig where I'm going to make a, you know, 30 or 40 yard cast with it and I'm going to drag it all the way back to the boat. When I'm fishing a wacky worm, I'm trying to fish that five gallon bucket or maybe the length of this table and that's it. I want to fish that little piece. I want to reel it back in and I want to make another very targeted cast because I'm not fishing this bait fast. I want it to land where I think there's a fish. I want the fish to see it on the fall. I want to cover just a little bit of ground and I'm going to reel it back in and do it again. This is never a technique or even like a shaky head, where I may drag it 10, 20, 30 feet along the bottom. This is a, try to catch a fish where it lands, you're fishing that piece of cover, and then you're trying to fish it four feet, maybe, if you're, if you're covering that much ground with it. So I think that's a big thing a lot of people get wrong with a wacky worm, is they try to fish it the whole way back to the boat. That's not what I do with a wacky worm. Um, so yeah, so throw it in there, let it sink to the bottom, know what's on the bottom, watch your line, watch your line, religiously when you're fishing a wacky worm. Watch for any little twitch, anything like that. That's gonna tell you that a fish has picked it up because if you're watching any, any of my videos, especially the bed fishing stuff, you'll see that fish that are on the bed, they can pick your bait up and blow it right back out before you ever realize what's happened. So if you're not watching your line, you may have just had a seven pounder eat your stuff and spit it back out before you ever realized what happened. It can still happen even when you're watching your line because I've had that happen to me. So. Uh, I can't stress that enough, just how important it is to, uh, to watch your line all the time when you're fishing that wacky worm. But very targeted cast. Don't try to cover a lot of ground. Watch your line and, uh, and having you a good setup. It'll make you a better wacky worm fisher.